Eve Lindley has over 17 credits to her name. She was Hulk Carter on Mr. Robot, Frida in Outsiders, and now she's starring as Simone in Dispatches from Elsewhere. It is my absolute honor to talk to you this afternoon, Eve. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Jazz? Good, good. For those who haven't seen you in Dispatches, I love your character and who Simone is. So let's just go back to how the role actually came your way. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Um, I really love Simone too. Um, and uh, it was it was just sort of a basic audition process for me. Um, the casting director, Gail Keller, I went into her office and um, I read the part. Uh, and I think I was I was a little sort of nervous that day, but um, I'm generally pretty good when it comes to auditioning. Um, and uh, I remember asking her if I could like do it over again. And she was like, no, like, I think you should keep it the way that it was. And I'm really glad that she said that because <laughs> obviously, you know, then I ended up getting the role. But um, yeah, there were some callbacks with Jason that went really well. And um, yeah, and then eventually it was mine, which was sort of a dream come true. <laughs> and, and here we are. You talked about your audition process. Like, do you have like a routine or like a ritual that you go through? I think actors love hearing other actors talk about like what they do. Yeah, I think, you know, auditioning is a really, I always really enjoyed it, which is like not the norm. Um, I like kind of, I'm really good at like meeting new people and going up in front of them and being like, oh, like, here are the aspects of my personality that are like, <laughs> you know, really good. And then like, I'll hide the ones that are not so good. Um, and, uh, you know, ultimately, like, whenever you walk into an audition room, they like, they want it to be you, you know? So um, for me, I've always sort of hung on to that and like, sort of understood that auditioning is sort of like, putting pieces of a puzzle together. And when a piece isn't the right piece, you don't throw it away. You just sort of put it down and wait for, you know, the right piece to come along. So, um, yeah, but I like to go in, I like to be fully memorized. And then I like to ceremoniously throw away the sides when um, the audition is over. <laughs> I love it. Um, but. Let's go back because before acting, you actually had enrolled in the Fashion Institute of Technology. So you worked in, you know, you did costuming on some Broadway shows. So talk about that interest and how that evolved from costuming into where we are today, acting. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I mean, I was really lucky to get to be like, you know, the lowest rung on many of these teams of costumers. There were people way above me who had way more to do with everything. Um, but uh, I don't know. I think ultimately costuming and acting sort of are about creating a character um, and like thinking about the character and thinking about where they buy their clothes, how they live their life, what, you know, what their hair, makeup, like the kind of visuals of a character are really important to, for me at least to like building it. So um, I always sort of saw them as, you know, one in the same, <laughs> um, which is why it's really important. I think the working together of like a costume designer and an actor. Yeah. And then talk about segueing that into TV. Like what do you remember about that first role the first audition let's go. I'm taking you back for this one um yeah way back I remember um well actually my first audition that I ever um that I ever had in New York I got a screen test for um which was like really exciting and I remember at the time being like oh this is like normal like this is how it always goes and um you know, obviously that's not, <laughs> that's not normal. That is not the case. So, um, 
yeah, but I remember that. I remember like flying to LA to test and like just being like, you know, very giddy. Um, and then I didn't get that, but then my next audition was Outsiders, which I did get. So um, I don't know what year this was. This must have been like 2015. There was like a big burst of like trans roles um, that year. Um, so I was in the right place at the right time. <laughs> What's so beautiful about Simone is that Simone is such a great character with so many layers and you know there's so much that you want to learn about her and she's a well-crafted character so you talked about the collaboration process between costumer and actor talk about collaborating and on Simone with Jason and and that conversation yeah I I mean I think like beginning to end this was like a super collaborative process for me, whether it was like with Carrie Langerman, who was the costume designer, or Jason, who, you know, wrote and sort of created this character. Um, and I think like a lot of, um, I think a lot of this job in general is sort of who you're collaborating with and what they're, what you're able to sort of learn from them and um, steal from them and all of that. So um, for me, and I think that that goes like two ways, you know? So I think Jason similarly, like, I think when he met me, he saw that I could bring a lot to the character and, um, you know, it was just sort of like a two way street creating this girl um, between the two of us and, um, and all of us, you know, even the other actors in the scene. Um, so yeah, I think the collaboration is actually my favorite part of this business. <laughs> what was Simone like on the page when you first saw her? Like you're reading that script. Talk about that, how she was there to how she was on screen after the your input, right? Because you had a lot of input into how she was crafted. Sort of. I mean, for me, though, like, the moment that I read the page, I, she was there. Like, I, you know, I knew what I could do to bring her to life. And I knew that, I mean, any, any character I play, I bring a lot of myself to just because I am myself. So, <laughs> um, but for me, so much of her was there from the very beginning. And, like, the collaborating was organic and it happened, but it wasn't as if I had to come in and sort of like be like, all right, we gotta, you know, we have to like change the foundation of this character and like, you know, do all this work. Like she was a hundred percent there and um, it was super seamless. So like my input and all of that, I don't think it shaped her in, in any major way other than just sort of giving her a pulse, if that makes sense. Yeah. But what I, the other thing I love about the show is that it's a, it's just really about two people who fall in love with one another with the complications of like what it is to fall in love. Like how rewarding is it to get a script week after week and just see what happens with them and just to be on a show like Dispatches? Yeah, I think um, certainly at the time I, I did not expect to get a script like this. You know, I, I was sort of, I was happy and I felt very fortunate to be able to like do small sort of under five day playing roles in movies and on TV with the occasional, you know, recurring role. And then um, being in New York, getting to do theater, getting to do readings and all that stuff. So I felt really like, really happy, just sort of flip-flopping um, back and forth. And then um, when Simone came my way, I was just sort of like, you know, this is like a, this is like a, a career, hopefully a career changing role, you know? So, um, so it was, it was exciting. It was nerve wracking and exciting and, um, I think I saw the potential that the role and the story had to not only 
be great and be about two people falling in love and and just sort of be a beautiful love story. But I also saw the potential for it to be sort of low-key revolutionary and like something that is not on TV a whole lot um, for, uh, you know, a relationship between a cis man and a trans woman. Um, so yeah, I think I, I sort of saw the cornucopia of, of what was possible <laughs> and like what could be with this role. And it was very exciting. It was so very exciting. Yeah. How different was it being on a show like this to say something like, you know, Mr. Robot and even though they're both episodic, but. Well, I think, I mean, in my experience, it's like for Mr. Robot, I just sort of showed up and like met a few really cool people and then I was out of there, you know, like I, um, and I, again, I loved doing that. Like I, Growing up, I used to watch um, West Side Story a lot, um, which is a super problematic movie for the, for many reasons. But um, I remember the character of Anita. Like, I always thought she, like, comes in, she, like, hits a home run, she sings an amazing song, and she gets out of there. And, like, she comes out looking like a rock star. And um, I always used to kind of enjoy doing that myself and you know just going in and knowing my lines and meeting some cool a-list celebrity for the day and then just sort of getting out of there um and so the difference for me with dispatches was like being there day in and day out and like kind of really being able to take responsibility for the show and like take responsibility for you know having guest stars there and showing them you know, introducing them to people and trying to be, you know, accommodating um, the way that many series regulars had been for me in my past. Um, so yeah, there was, most of the difference was like social and professional and, you know, all of that. Yeah. Um, was, ep okay, episode seven of the series, there's a night, there's great chemistry between you and Jason. So, and, mm -hmm there's a really nice romantic moment. Was that your first on-screen kiss? Like, <laughs> um, Yeah, for the most part. I mean, <laughs> I think I'd done it, I think I, like, I had done a handful of, you know, romantic things in, like, a play and in, like, a short film, but, um, but yeah, this was like a big moment and it was my first like romantic comedy kiss, you yeah. know? Like, it was my first like sweeping camera, like two people just falling into each other and like, you know. So it was it was different than any other on screen kiss I've ever done. What was the what was the what were you going through for like that first cause like you said, it was like your first on camera big sweeping moment, right? And right. it's not as it's not as you know, romantic as people like to believe it is. So what was going through your mind and? Um, so many things. Um, I was really nervous. I was like, but I was nervous about the kiss from like episode two. Like I was like, I don't know how you do this. And I don't know how like, you know, how long you're supposed to hold it for and like all of these things. And, um, and then, doing it on the day there was like all these extras and it was you know we were in this tent and it was um you know I, the the pressure was mounting for me and then there was like this one moment where I was like wait a minute like Jason has to like sing in front of all these people like he has to really kind of do more of the heavy lifting in this moment like he has you know like in in for me in this moment, I can just sort of like be the person here to like, you know, help him out. And so as soon as I made it about that, I got a little less nervous. Um, and I got more nervous for him having to sing like a really difficult song in front of, you know, a bunch of extras over and over and over again. And all of that. <laughs> and what I love about the show is that you're surrounded by like a great group of actors and, you know, Sally Field, like, 
what have you learned from her and like did you ever go up to her for advice and yeah sally was really um she was a really important person for me to have there like just as another woman who had been through the business um at many different ages of her life and also at many different sort of ages and incarnations of the business. Like she's here now in like a post Me Too Hollywood. She was here um, way back when, you know, long before any of that. So I think she she's just somebody who like really has seen it all. She's played every character. She's like brought herself to so many iconic pieces of work and to have like the privilege of getting to learn about what was going on back backstage or behind the cameras while all of that was happening um I mean it, it was just such a privilege like I'll never forget that and I'll never forget like getting to hang out with Sally and like learning all sorts of things from her <laughs> You, you talked about, you know, watching West Side Story growing up. and But was there a moment when you were watching a movie or something in the theater where you're like, that's what I want to do. I want to be an actor. Um, I think definitely. I mean, I think, you know, any time there was a, a, a woman on screen who was like, the underdog or like, you know, the, um, the like, I hesitate to say this, but just like the ugly girl or like the weird girl, you know, I always, I always loved those sort of underdog women roles that were, um, you know, from Barbara Streisand to like, you know, uh, Elizabeth Moss, you know, like just from beginning to end, I always loved these sort of like, um, the odd girl out or, or, you know, just the girl who wasn't um, the leading lady, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I didn't see, I, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of like specifically trans representation growing up. So I think there was a lot of like stretching to find myself in characters and in, um, and in portrayals a lot of the time. And now that, I mean, look, it's 2020 West, you know, representation is so important and we've got shows like Pose, you know, you're in, you know, you're in this show. Like, what is that like for you now? Like, what would you say to, you know, young LGBTQ teens? And you're like a role model now, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, um, the, ugh, that's like, you know, I don't know. Um, but I definitely, I mean, I'm so thrilled and happy anytime a trans person is on TV. I, you know, in the past, I've been thrilled and happy when even a trans character was portrayed on TV. And, and the fact that there's this push for trans actors to be portraying them now is like incredible to me. And, um, you know, I think like anytime, anytime a queer person is on television, I find it to be like a, a victory, you know, or like a win. Um, um, especially queer people of color, like uh, it's, you know, the distribution of opportunity in Hollywood has been so limited for so long. So to see, um, to see marginalized people out there is like, it always feels good. Um, and to get to be one of them suddenly is like, I mean, I don't, I'm still unpacking it <laughs> um, and I'm still processing it. And um, I guess to any LGBT kids, I would say like, keep, keep watching and like, imagine yourself, imagine an amazing life for yourself. And like, hopefully if the planet is saved and if things, you know, if things go well, hopefully one day you can, um, you can live it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read any of the reviews for the show? Because, you know, when, you know, when the, after the first episode aired, you were seen as like the standout, the breakout star, which is huge in so many ways, you know, 
being, you know, being trans, representing the community, like it was so major in many ways. Like, did you like look on social media to see what people were saying? And I, um, I did not, I, I don't read reviews. I like definitely hear about them though from like my sisters or my parents <laughs> or something. So um, I, I know that it's been a positive response, which has been really, really amazing and cool. And also I, when we were airing, I was like going on Twitter a lot and I was like kind of, it was something that um, Jason did and I, I started doing it with him where you can really watch who's watching it in real time, you know, and see what people are thinking. And that was, that's not something I've ever done for anything I've ever been on. So it was like, it was really exciting. And um, yeah, I feel good. I feel really good about the response. I don't know like the ins and outs of it, of course, but um it's just, it's like a dream come true. It's like, <laughs> it's really weird and feels like some kind of Cinderella thing. I don't know, it's, you know. How did, how did playing Simone open up the parts that you want to play now moving forward after this? Like, I think, you know, I don't, I'm still sort of like reaping the benefits of Simone, you know, like I'm still like learning every day, like, oh yeah, like this is something that she did. And so maybe I can do it too. Or like, you know, um, seeing how playing this role has changed how I, how I feel about myself and how I feel about my worthiness in the world and all of that. Um, uh, she's definitely opened up a whole new slew of possibilities for me. And like, I think I always maybe was selling myself a little short before this. And um, now I'm kind of like, Oh, like I, maybe I could carry a show. Maybe I could like be a romantic interest. Uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe Hollywood is ready for that. <laughs> but maybe I am too. <laughs> So throughout the series, like Simone often goes like, you know, don't, don't um, mess up the game for, for me. Like, what is the game? What does that represent? Like, what is it? Have you figured it out? Like, what is my version of the game? Yeah. Well, I'm still figuring it out, but I definitely like my version of the game was always kind of just like being on set and like being around these like A-listers and you know it, it feels like you're in this like in this sort of other world you know um when you're working in this in this line of work so I think that like in a weird way was my game while we were shooting like I was like don't screw this up like don't blow this opportunity <laughs> like um so yeah I don't know I think and broader than that, maybe the game is just sort of navigating this business. <laughs> yeah. Dream, let's do dream co-stars. Last question. That'll be our last question. Oh my God. <laughs> so many, so many. Um, for anything or for dispatches? Anything. Anything. Um, I always loved Alan Cumming, um, Jim Carrey, um, Sarah Paulson, like anybody on American Horror Story, <laughs> um, Angelica Ross, like, I mean, just the list goes on. I, there's so many incredible talents right now that are slaying the game. So I, you know, it would be a dream come true to work with any of them. There you go. It's out there in the universe. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eve, for joining us this afternoon for the SAG After Foundation conversation from home. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, SAG After Foundation. That was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> and to everybody else, you know, thank you to, for joining us and thank you to SAG After Foundation. They also have a, a COVID-19 fund that benefits SAG members, so you can learn more from the SAG After Foundation website.